All right, I think we have a quorum. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, can you please read the roll? Al Alderman Bosley. Present. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderman Villa. Here. Alderman Carter. Present. Alderman Coder. Alderwoman Spencer. Present. Alderwoman Green. Alderman Ogilvy. Chairman French. Present. Six present, you have a quorum. All right, thank you. So this is the first um, meeting of the Public Utilities Committee, and the general idea is for these first few meetings to uh, bring in the different agencies and uh, divisions that uh, we have authority over uh, to kind of touch bases, uh, see what's going on with the organizations, uh, have an opportunity to ask questions, um, and see if there's anything that we need to act on uh, later in the year. So I think we uh, first, just to kind of show you how I tell you how I kind of think these committees should run is uh, first, I think if we meet at noon, the chairman should supply lunch. <laughs> uh, that should be a general rule around here. Uh, and <laughs> so enjoy pizza. Uh, two is, uh, you know, I think we are all adults on this committee. And so uh, if anybody has a question, feel free to ask the question. Um, ask as many questions as you want. Um, for, we have two former state reps on, uh, on this uh, committee, so they know how different the committees are run up in Jefferson City versus here. Uh, sometimes I think in City Hall we treat ourselves like children. Uh, so just ask a question if you have it. And, um, and I, it, the purpose of these hearings is also to get as much information as possible. And so uh, even if the speaker is, um, is in the middle of his presentation, if you have a question, feel free to ask it. I mean, this is the point, we're having a conversation here. So um, with that, uh, the Water Department, Mr. Scobie. Hello. How are you? Just fine. Good. Uh, first thing I, I did pass out to everyone is a copy of your budget. Um, that's actually before Ways and Means right now, but just so everybody has it. Um, can you kind of just give us an update on what's going on with the Water Division and um, and maybe an outline of uh, any budgetary changes or requests you've made this year? Okay. Um for those, I haven't met all of you in person. I'm Kurt Scobie, I'm the Director of Public Utilities, and also I function as the Water Commissioner for the City of St. Louis. Um, our budget is slightly less than what it was last year. There is some reshuffling of the funds. We were able to pay off a, uh, out, a uh, bond issuance from years ago, made our last payment last year, so that freed up some revenue this year. Uh, to spend on capital improvements, which we have done. That's a um, major item or area that we have increased our expenditure this year, but it also helps explain why we, our budget's a little bit less than last year. We are, um, we've been a public utility for 135 years. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, could I ask the, um, Mr. Scobie, to talk into that microphone for oh, the yes, please. gratification of the assembled multitude. I can hear him, but I doubt that the people behind him can. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is this better? Much better. I okay, so. good. Is this still good? Because I moved back a little bit. All right. So um, the utility has been city owned and operated for 135 years. And um, it's a it's slightly older than that, but. Um, it's an older utility. It's a, uh, we serve the city of St. Louis proper. We have wholesale customers in the uh, St. Louis County of Missouri American, across the river in St. Charles County, uh, rural district number two, cities of St. Peter's and St. Charles. We provide wholesale water to them. And then um, we have two treatment plants, one on the Mississippi called Chain of Rocks in the North City. The second plant is out in Chesterfield that's on the Missouri River. The, um, many years ago, the city of Chicago dumped water, their sewage into the Illinois River. We were able to um, track increased disease outbreaks. That got the um, fathers of the city at that time looking to look at actually consider water treatment and also um, a second source of water. There's also was an anticipation of um, ever increasing population for the city it, itself. So, I guess is that a no, general I, overview or, or there's no that's a good overview. Um, so, 
Could you tell us, and maybe even get, get us this uh, after the meeting, uh, who the largest customers are of our uh, water division? Besides the um, citizens of the city of St. Louis, uh, we, have lar we have large co corporate customers, and you also supply water to some municipalities outside of us? I can get you the wholesale customers and our largest customers. Okay. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Our largest single customer is um, Anheuser-Busch. Okay. And how are they billed? Do they have, uh, are they billed at the same rate as um, a homeowner or is it a special corporate rate? It is, um, they're charged by the um, water that they use. There's a tiered system. They, um, they uh, the more water you use, the cheaper it gets in quantity. The most residents are served by flat rate, uh, rates structure. That's based on the number of rooms, the number of toilets, showers, or tubs, and then actually the frontage of the property because it, we figured the thinking is that most people water the grass or do some act outside activity. So that's to capture some of that expense. But that all goes into a formula on how much they're charged, and then that is um, sent to them every quarter. We bill okay. on a quarterly basis. And you mentioned the two plants, uh, Chain of Rocks and Chesterfield? Howard Ben, we call it, but it's out in Chesterfield, yes. So the city of St. Louis owns a plant in Chesterfield? Yes, we do. Look at there. It's um, hidden away. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, any, anybody else have any questions so far? Nope. Well, I am nope. curious where the plant in Chesterfield is. Go ahead. Where on the Missouri River is the plant in Chesterfield? It is. Um, it's off Isles Street Road. Um, you know where um, Ladue comes into Olive mm -hmm. out there? We are, um, our old entrance road is literally on their side of Olive through um, Ladue Bluffs subdivision there. It used to be property that the um, city owned. It was sold for that development, but you can straight down the river valley from there. There's a large smokestack that at times you can see that um, shows our location. That's where I was thinking it was. Just okay. Confirming. Thanks. Yes, Missouri American has their um, central plant just downstream of us off of Hog Hollow Road. <clears throat> right. And um, can you remind us what is the current uh, residential rate and um, when's the last time that went up? <clears throat> it went up. Um, 2011 the last and it, it varies depends on on the components but we figured that the average uh, family pays around um, 70 75 dollars a quarter for their water okay <coughs> all right uh, any other questions about that go ahead it's fair to ask it do you uh, see any proposed rates in the not too distant future Probably um, within two or three years, we'll go for another rate increase. I mean, a rate increases are going to be a fact of life periodically, always have been and always will be. Yeah. And if my memory serves me correctly, the rate increases are, are done through an ordinance. Yes, that's correct. So, so we would have to raise the water rates? That, we that meaning be, the, the Board of Aldermen? That would be my hope that you'd be willing to do that when we need it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? I have a question. So um, can you help me understand uh, the breakout of water usage between residential and commercial in the city of St. Louis? We do not. Our income is about 50-50, a little bit higher for the residents. But actual water consumption, since we don't have meters on the residents, I couldn't say for sure. I see. And then the city itself uses a fair amount of water as water features in the various parks and um, that we have throughout the city. So that, that uses a fair amount too. But I don't have a breakdown on, on that. It'd just be all estimates. There's been a lot in the news lately, you know, about water issues, you know, in other parts of the country. Do, do we face any water issues here in the city of St. Louis? Um, the um, older infrastructure would probably be our biggest issue, which is shared with the older cities of the country. I mean, we're kind of typical in that respect. But as far as grout, 
I don't see that really ever impacting us like it is in the west, southwest, or even the southeast. Hmm. So we have the two biggest rivers in the continent going by us. We draw from both of them. Our chain of rocks plan is um, intakes are just upstream of a low water dam that is maintained by the Corps so that they can operate a lock at that location. Mm -hmm. So as long as they're in business, we'll be in business in a drought. So we're in pretty good shape. Would you say that we had any, we have considerable pollution issues um, with our water? Not a great deal. I mean, there's such a huge volume of water going by every day. Um, you know, I think our hard bend plant on the Missouri, there might be 60, 80,000 cubic feet per second going by. So it just takes a phenomenal amount of contamination continuously going in for it to see it. With that said, though, what we do see occasionally is trace amounts of some um, contaminants. The biggest one that we see is in the spring and early summer is atrazine. That is a herbicide that farmers apply in the spring to their fields. And then um, we add carbon to the water to help remove it and keep it within um, safe levels or accepted levels. And then, um, then later on in the summer when it stops showing up, then we cut back on that. That's the biggest one we have and we can address it. So. Did uh, our water department have anything to do with the uh, Metropolitan Sewer District's consent decree? No, I, I was asked to participate in Project Clear is about as close as we get. I'm, I've not been involved with the uh, consent decree. I didn't testify. I haven't provided any input. Haven't been asked to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Questions over here? I, I'm not on the committee. Please go ahead. I do, I do have a question, only because I got a lot of calls about it. Uh, and I guess MSD met with the water department and my understanding uh, from what I hear from the guys and maybe you can tell me differently that the water department is going to pay MSD a fee to I've heard manage it I've heard assess it I've heard all different things uh, I heard the fee was upwards of six hundred thousand dollars yes we have talked to MSD um, We've, the, uh, where to begin? I guess about a year and a half ago, we asked them to come in and do a very high level, quick look at us, like two or three days, look at our operations, look at the staffing levels, some of our expenses, and look to see what they saw that possibly opportunities to become more efficient. Um, MSD has done this internally themselves with their own department been doing it for maybe 11 years or more. I've seen some success in doing it, reducing cost. And um, so we asked them to do that. And then we have a intergovernmental agreement that we are entertaining to enter into with them for them to provide some staff to work with our, our, our staff. They're not managing us, they're not controlling us. What we would be purchasing is their labor, or their time coming over. It would be three full-time staff the first couple of years with lesser um, commitment after that. Additional resources from MSD as we needed in staff. We would pay for, pay for their labor. We would also um, pay for their experience of going through this themselves as they work with our staff. It's really a water division endeavor to look for cost savings and maybe advance it quicker and maybe more efficiently by having people uh, who have done this in their own organization come over and do this. These are managers and other staff. Well, I guess my, my thing with MSD is we met with them the other day and it seems like they want to raise and they're telling us that the, the rates are going to could go possibly up to $90 a month. So if they're finding efficiencies, I'd like to know why our bills aren't going down, why they're going up. I, I, do, I do understand why to a point they are, but, yeah. but you know, I, I guess I have concerns. Um, you well, know, I, I have a lot of faith in you and Jim that, mm -hmm. to, to do the job, and I don't know that bringing in more payroll is, is, is the answer to 
you know, and, and, I, and I really think it, it's causing a lot of concern amongst the workers. And, and, and again, $600,000 is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. And, and thank you for your comments about myself and faith in me. It is, um, it's, a, it's an investment. You know, if we could spend this $500,000 a year doing capital improvement projects that we need to do, but then the money is spent. If we can help identify and capture savings of 500000 a year, then we have 500000 a year to spend towards that all the time. And, and that's part of what is, a, as I see it, is an investment, is we have a lot of talented and capable people, but every day they show up, they have at least eight hours of work to do, operation and maintenance. And some of the problems with we have doing something in-house, we will do a very good job of laying it out and implementing it, but it takes a long, long time to do it because you show up to work, you may have a main break or you may have a treatment issue, and you gotta address that. You can't do this, this planning of change, identifying the change and implementing it and seeing it. Well, I don't know, I, I, but you're not out fixing water main breaks yourself and that, but, but you know, one of the things and the concerns, and I'm just gonna keep going back to what people are calling me about, Mm -hmm. The Chesterfield or West Bend plant, uh, I think one of the recommendations is they're going to shut that plant down or sell it? We're not selling it. And um, one of the things that they brought out in there is that we have far more capacity than what we have demand. We have, uh, between the two plants, we can produce 360 uh, million gallons per day. And our average daily consumption is 120 million gallons per day. And what they ask is, why do we have two plants? And I think that's a valid question to ask. It's not that I think it uh, should be based just upon that. There's a lot of um, issues that would involve going from two to one plant. The system is not set up for one plant to be served. If you go to one plant, you don't have the redundancy that you have by two plants. It is a... Um, I mean, it gets complicated. But if we are going to renew the plants re uh, over the years, which we need to do, it's, you know, you're investing hundreds of millions of dollars into two plants, and, you, and we need to be able to say, if we're going to do that, why are we doing that instead of going to one? It's a scary question for the employees. As a person in charge of the utilities and providing water 24-7 that's safe to drink and always available, it scares me to go to two from two to one. But it's a question that we need to ask, and it's something that we're not going to race in there and shut down one plant and, um, and rely on one old plant. And it gets complicated. But it sounds like it's a real possibility that they'll go to one plant. It needs to be looked at. There's no active plans to shut it down. And you feel you need somebody outside to help you make the decision? I mean, there's a committee here that certainly, you know, I, I would assume have, would, um, you know, want to discuss something like that before, long before it could ever happen. But I, I would, again, I go back to, you know, I, I've had good luck talking to you. And of course, Jim, when there's issues, you guys are on them. I don't, I, I still have to believe that there's the capability within this group and the capability within the water department mm. to make those decisions without going to any outside source. It's, um, you're, are you talking in general now or are you talking about the plan specific? Um, in, in general, I think that, you know, I think that between you and Jim mm -hmm. and I would hope the mayor's office and, and the public utilities committee that we can come up with, a, with an intelligent decision without bringing in someone outside to tell us what to do. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm they're not telling it. I mean, they're, well, I mean, they're providing they, they, their perspective, but the decision to whether proceed or not is not theirs to make. That's not MSD. We're not asking somebody to tell us what to do or how. I mean, to, to be in charge of us, we're not paying them. We're asking them 
to take a third party look at us and and bring their perspective that that brings and then also their experience that they've gained over the years of doing this very thing. We're not MSD, we're not gonna be MSD at the end of this, but what my hope is that we'll be a much more efficient <coughs> utility that frankly we're more sustainable in the long, long term. Because I mean, we're a utility made, uh, designed to um, supply a million people water and we're serving 319,000. We don't have the same customer base that we had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. The same, this reduced customer base has to support this larger utility and we need to be able to answer these questions. Now whether we choose to go down a certain path or not, that remains with the city. That remains with me, that remains with your committee, with the aldermatic, it remains with the mayor's office. I mean, there's a lot of players and stakeholders. It also, this is a community system, is what the citizens want too. I mean, if you're talking about a big change, fundamental change in how we operate, that's gonna be a drawn out process or can be if you go from two to one plant. Now some of the other changes that we're looking at they're more simple and more easier done and you know having extra staff on hand would be a huge benefit to us. You down? Um, yeah. oh, maybe thank, thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, with the fact that St. Charles County I would assume is the fastest growing county in the state are we supplying 10% of their water, 20% of their water, or is that a fair question? I'm not sure, it's a fair question. I'm not sure what percentage we're providing them because they have, uh, like City of St. Charles, they have their own treatment plant. They draw from wells in the river bottom and they have other sources. Missouri American uh, supplies water over there and um, so it is a mixture. We supplement what the what they produce or use. Okay. Yet um, <laughs> yesterday evening in a, a community meeting, uh, for the third t time, I heard the young man from from Better Together, and I almost know his speech not by heart. But anyway, have we looked big picture? What if uh, the city of St. Louis, who in, historically uh, the city of St. Louis's water is rated, I guess, some of the best in the country and our water department, being your own enterprise account, really don't provide us w with a great deal of consternation here. But is, is there an opportunity with St. Louis County, big picture, to provide, to have one water department? Or is that supercilious? No, I don't, it, it's nothing that I'm working on at this point or even considering. It's a ballot question, but it's not something that's on my agenda to explore or, or do. I mean, Missouri Americans serve St. Louis County, except for Kirkwood, which has their own water department. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody else, any other community supplying water to themselves. Wouldn't that be, and I interrupted you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be an obvious thing to look at before you close down one of our plants, or are they just worn out? Well, I'm not proposing to shut them, shut them down. It's, it's a, um, it's, it, you know, there's a host of possibilities that you can do. But if you're gonna sell something off or close it down, it gets complicated and that's not a discussion that really I'm here, I can answer today. Oh no, yeah, and I'm not, Believe me, uh, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. I'm just saying that, you know, there, there we do in fact need to look at doing things uh, with certainly St. Louis County, who's our closest neighbor. And I just thought that the let's say the who would be the <coughs> excuse me who would be the imprimatur of the decisions you talked about if in fact you decided to close one of the plants? Is that an internal decision? It would start with um, the department recommendation but I I would not make that on my own I mean you we are have state oversight of our operation they would have to be consulted I would think 
I think it's a community discussion too on you know what what type of utility do we want? What type yeah. of reliability okay. do we want? It just, just so you know, I, and the, I'm not the person to be telling you. You're, you're, you know, you're not on trial here. I think we're all trying to learn. I, I, I know I, I am. So just, yeah. I, I'm going to ask one final question, Mr. Chairman, if you would uh, let me. What, what, uh, how is the payment rate of uh, city water bills? Is that a, a, a small problem or a big problem? It's a. Um, I don't see it as a big problem. We do have uh, uh, accounts that are uh, in arrears, but we um, go out and we get, in the end, we get pretty good collection rates that are probably like 95% or so. And we send out the bills, we get a certain number that pay it. We send out a delinquent notice, we get a lot more people coming in and pay at that point. And then when we send our crews out to do shutoffs, we get a whole lot of people coming in and paying at that time. And, and we oftentimes shut off the water because we can't shut off the sewer. So you have to interface with Metropolitan Sewer District if the sewer bill goes unpaid? Not our problem. This hmm. MSD. Did it used to be your problem? Mm -mm. Well, you know, the city used to own sewers, but it wants MSD. Uh, was formed to see got out of the sewer business. That has not been anything I've ever dealt with. We don't shut off drinking water for a non-payment of MSD bill. Uh, let, let's say that I, uh, um, I live somewhere in the 25th ward and I haven't paid my sewer bill for 14 months. Does my water bill not get cut? Does my water not eventually get water supply cut off? No. It does not? No. So MSD must have a miserable collection rate. Well, it makes it more difficult, I'm sure. I'm sorry? It makes it more difficult, I'm sure. But yeah, I, I'm being told they put a lien on your house, but we have evolved to the point where liens, quite frankly, in Ward 11 are a joke because they're, they just walk away from them. Uh, when I say they, some people that are less fortunate wind up we wind up with the house with the stack of liens on it, so that's not a perfect system. I, I, I may be living in the past with the connection between MSD and the water department. They, they deal, I mean, they're part, we're both part of the water cycle, but different aspects of it. We're, we're on the drinking water supply. We work well with MSD. We interact well with them. Um, but they are a separate organization with a separate amount of funding source and collection process and all that. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I think it is important for us to be educated on, on the operations of the, of the department. As a committee that is supposed to provide, provide some level of oversight, it's important for us to know what's going on and, and how it works. So uh, again, in the interest of just basic education here, when we as a city of St. Louis and the water division supply water to a, a municipality in St. Louis County, Mm -hmm. How does that work? Do we actually draw pipes from our facilities to theirs? Do we, how do we, how does that work? They come to us and hook up to our, our, our system and, uh, and draw from us from our mains. And then we'll put in a meter box at that location, or they will put it in, we'll put in a meter, and then we'll bill them for the amount of water that they uh, get from us. We'll have a contract agreement to um, cover how much is charged and the arrangements for drawing water from us. And so the, the pipes to homes in that municipality are in some way connected to our system? Yeah, and through this connection, like um, District Number Two and uh, the cities of St. Charles and St. Peter's, they ran pipelines across or under the river to our facility out in Chesterfield and connected into our transmission mains leaving the plant mm. to draw water from us. And so, you know, in a way we are interconnected with all the homes across the river, but it is really considered a separate system. Once, once it leaves the meter, it's their water, their system. And, and those the pipes, they own those pipes or we own those pipes? They own those pipes. Okay. So if there's a break, they have to go out and repair it and, um, and deal with it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? We do have a couple other speakers too. But. 
I just wanted to follow up uh, on my colleague from the 11th uh, questioning regarding um, I, I, the way I'd like to phrase this is specifically what efforts, if any, are we undertaking to increase our service levels within the county or are we? Providing service providing in St. Louis? Providing services. Um, in St. Louis County, we don't provide services there. I know, but it, to me, you know, if we're looking at efficiencies, you know, mm -hmm. we would also want, I mean, we're obviously overcapacitized with the ability to provide water. And so if we're evaluating, you know, possible scenarios, one of them would be how do we increase uh, the amount of usage <clears throat> of water, you know, uh, of people using our water system uh, or the water that we provide. We have this neighbor next door to us that has 900,000 people living in it. Why wouldn't we want to try and work with them, the various municipalities and or the county directly on providing water services? We we're talking to them. I mean, drinking water industry is a small industry specialized. So we're, we see each other, we interact with each other. They know that we have water available. They tap into us. The drought of 2012, they bought a lot of water from us. We probably saw an additional million dollars in revenue due to the drought um, for that year. So, but their business plan is a, um, a private utility. They get their profit on the capital investments that they have. They don't get a whole lot of profit by resale of water. So there is a, uh, I guess, an innate um, driving force that they're, I mean, which is part of their world to um, do the capital investment so that they can get the, um, the return on the investment for their shareholders. So buying water from us minimizes that. They're better off in some respects to build a new plant or re uh, renovate it because they get a better profit on that. But with that said, though, they have the same issues that we do and everybody else is that people really don't care for paying more for basic um, utilities. So they are actually looking at times to buying water from us um, because it can be cheaper under certain circumstances. So, so and that, that's my next question. So Missouri American Water provides a lot of services to the county is my understanding. Mm -hmm. The majority of them. That's, that's my understanding. So where are their rates in comparison to ours? And I understand that many of the homes in the county are probably metered and therefore mm -hmm. uh, they can calculate usage a lot better than we can. Um, but just in terms of, you know, the rates themselves, you know, what, what's the comparison there? Are we they're, they're historically higher. They're, they're higher now. I couldn't tell you how much because I haven't looked at them recently. But I can do that and get back with you on that comparison, how much they're charging. I guess, you know, from a business perspective, if we're going to the county and saying, you know what, we can supply the water for you and it would be cheaper mm -hmm. for your residents, if I was an elected in the county, I'd be saying, you know, let's do it, right? Uh, so, and then we kind of alleviate that concern as it pertains to capacity as well, or being overcapacitized within the department. Um, so I, it's food for thought, and I'd certainly love to get more information on that. Okay, um, I'll, I'll get you some more information. My thoughts eventually is that we're going to be doing a lot more wholesale water because it makes a lot of sense to just buy extra capacity and um, provide it to these surrounding utilities instead of them investing in expansion of a plan or something like that. Yeah. I think we'll see that. Um, but they have to um, come to the same conclusion. Right. And I'm happily telling them, buy from us. And my last question, uh, the city of Kirkwood, it's right in the middle of the county. Uh, where do they get their water supply from? <laughs> well, they used to have a plant on the Missouri River, uh, not Merrimack River, excuse me, Merrimack River. And then they uh, did away with that and they just buy water from Missouri American now. Okay, so they did used to have a plant down on the Merrimack then? That's okay. correct. Okay, but, but no longer. Yes, it's been gone for a while. 
So they're buying water from Missouri America and at, I would assume a higher rate than what they could buy water from us for? Right, but there's no close main to supply them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Ogilvy, you had a question? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I think Alderman Vicaro sort of asked this question, but can we just talk specifically about the major projects um, line item? And there's a, there's a jump from going back to 2003, 56,000, and now in this, this budget year we're uh, budgeted for 2.26 million. What, mm -hmm. what are the major projects included in that line item? Well, there, there's a host of different projects. There's not one big massive one. For example, there's about $400,000 that we're investing in our computer network where we're upgrading software, we change, we're changing out some of the hardware. We've deferred some of this due to, a, uh, due to the downturn in the economy several years ago. Now we're catching up. That'd be one example. What are the others? We are doing basin work at both plants, repairing concrete, valves, those locations. We are working on rebuilding filters in the two filter plants as part of that. <coughs> There's a roof that we're re replacing. Um, um, okay, so the, the consulting that was, um, sort of briefly discussed with MSD. What, is that in the budget for 16 or is that just a conversation right now? And th there's no signed agreement so that's not budgeted for in the upcoming year's budget? It, what we had initially thought to do is um, eventually put out a board bill and have the um, authorization to fund it in the board bill. Okay. But is that money somewhere in the budget now? No. We're an enterprise account, so we're required <coughs> through bonds and, and good practice to have a reserve of money that um, in case we have a disaster or something that we can survive it. <coughs> and also make sure there's enough money to pay the bondholders in an event so that they get paid. But when we have, uh, when we save money, we can put it in an account and let it accumulate until we can either do like an ordinance to do capital improvements or pay for something like this. Okay, so can I skip down to the, the taxes and licenses line item within the budget, which in 14 was 3.3 .3 million and last year and this year is more like 5.3 million. I'm on, if you're looking at the same book, it's page 161. Walk over there and take a look at what you're looking at. Might sure. Be easier. What page are you looking at, Alderman? 161. Page 161. And what line was it? What um, category? Taxes and licenses. Oh, taxes and licenses. 5.3 million. Well, well, I wouldn't say peanuts, but it is. It may not be that. But well, yeah, but it peanuts. jumped from 3.3 to 5.3 over the 14 to 15 cycle. So yeah, that's in 24 months, it jumped from yeah, two million dollars. I would have to go back and look on that. Okay. Okay. That is significant. Thank you. 
That's it. So uh, just a bit here, a couple of information requests here. Um, just one, if we can get a, a list of the major customers. Um, could we also get a breakdown of the major projects, that $2.2 million, where that's going? You mentioned the one $400,000 project. Um, taxes and licenses, mm -hmm. uh, the $5.3 million, which jumped from 3.2 in fiscal year 14. Uh, and then you mentioned uh, the reserve account, where yes. you, is that in this budget or is that a separate fund? It's separate. Can you get us the balance of that account? And, oh yes, go ahead. And I'd like to add to that, I know it's probably listed in a different book here, but we have expenses of 57 million it looks like for the department. Do we have uh, the <coughs> revenue for the department as well so we can see the kind of I'll get the, I'll get that to you too. Okay, thank you. And there was also a request for a comparison in rates between um, Missouri or American Water mm -hmm. and, okay. and ours. So I'm going to put that there too. Any other information requests? Go ahead, Alderville. As long as we're giving a, giving a, him a litany, uh, the, the I would like to know the status of the bonding capacity, where you are with. Uh, your, your current bonding capacity. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. That, one more. I have just one more question, and it's not an information request, but even though, and I can, would really like to can, congratulate us on having the best water in the country. We really do have fantastic water. You definitely recognize it when you go other places. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm appreciative of the fact that we don't have a lot of pollution issues and that we don't seem to have a issue with uh, having water in the future. But that being said, I think that conservation of water is something that our nation should be taking seriously. And I wonder if we have any um, uh, steps that we're taking as a city uh, to encourage the conservation of water uh, on the part of our residents. I know most of our residents are not metered, uh, but uh, I wondered if, if, if we have any steps that we're taking to promote the conservation of water. Well, the, you have the mayor's sustainability program that that's a component of it. Um, you know, the general um, will be looking at uh, water usage in the city, in the city parks, and looking at reducing that amount. That's part of this project, and that will help um, conserve water, the usage, for everybody's benefit. Um, it is not a driving force for us. I mean, we're not constricted on the amount of water that we, um, we have to utilize. It's, I mean, like many parts of the country. We're, we're kind of an orphan unique. They should move here, is my opinion, <coughs> where they can be. <laughs> we could use them here, yes, I agree. Okay. Alderman Carter. So, well, I just had a question about, um, so there seems to be a few folks, um, after you guys come and cut the water off, they have they can come and uh, cut their own water back on? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and they so uh, do you see a, a, a rising in that where you guys have to come back out to cut water off? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know how you would track that, but how would you know if someone cuts their water back on? Well, if they don't come and pay their water bill, we'll come back out and take a look to see if it's back on. There's somebody, sometimes people move out. Uh, it, it, it varies. Eventually, we'll come back and turn it off again. We have a series of uh, steps we take progressively, and if in the end, after several steps, they, they are uh, still unwilling to come pay for the water, we'll dig it up and either turn it off at the main, there's a corp, a valve that we turn off, or we can destroy the um, service line and keep them from sealing from us. I mean, it gets, it, I view it as pretty ignorant that you know they're there stealing the water expecting others to pay their costs and um, <coughs> most pe I understand people having issues those are the people they get them resolved well before you get to these worst case scenarios and when you get there um, that's where I kind of lose my sympathy and because um, then it's a substantial expense for us and for them I mean trying to get out from underneath it after it went that long is, is tough for somebody. So, Is that a crime to turn the water back on? 
Yeah, I would say. I couldn't cite you the ordinance or rule or whatever, but we really don't prosecute it. I, I think being able to turn off the water and take those steps really goes a long ways to address it. I mean, I, the really bad cases, does there the, are kind of few. Does the water division have anything like a cold weather rule? Like, it, or can you turn off water anytime? We don't have a uh, rule that restricts it, but we try to use our judgment on when we go out and turn off water. Like if it's gonna be a three day holiday, uh, we don't go out and shut off a bunch of water right before that and shut our offices so they can't come in and pay and get it turned back off in time. We, we have people working late to go back out and turn on water if somebody comes in and pay. Um, if it's really hot, we'll just you know, self-police and not turn off water at various times. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, I know we have the uh, director of operations here who also wanted to speak on this. Um, I think it also would be good if we maybe arranged a tour of the facilities for the committee sometime. I'd be happy to do that. Do you have a um, day, typical day of the week, or? We'll, uh, we'll kind of poll the committee by email, and I'll get back to you on that. OK. Um, <clears throat> I was say, if we do it at noon, the chairman will buy us. Well, you guys provide lunch too, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to buy you lunch. Early morning tour. I like this. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and uh, did you, you got all those information requests? Yeah, I have, um, Three, four, five, six, I have seven listed. I have seven too. So okay. I, I think that's good, and I'll, I'll get back to you on those. And Should just, I send them to you and you distribute them? Or? Yeah, you just send okay. them to me and I'll, I'll get them to the committee. Um, and last thing too, so that, that 600000 that was brought up about the MSD contract, that is not in the budget here. It's not a line item in there. It's, that money would have come out of this reserve fund. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Walton. Would you, would you raise your right hand? And <laughs> Where to tell the truth, the whole truth. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman, members. Thanks for listening. Thank you guys all heard. We got a great water commissioner here, and you know he started running a plant in the early days, so he's really got his feet on the ground and understands what the issues are here. I just heard a couple things I don't think we maybe went as far as we should have with, and I, so I appreciate the opportunity here. One was talking about closing a plant, and that is in that efficiency study. And I, I believe we have some MSD people there that will share that with you. Okay. And that was done, you know, about a year and a half ago, I suppose. And it talks to that point. Closing a plant is nothing that can be taken lightly. It's nothing that can be done on short order. Uh, the, the piping network is interconnected. It would take tens and tens of millions of dollars to even go toward that. And our existing plants are in need of repair. And there's going to be tens and tens of millions of dollars that need to go into these plants to make one plant good, to be able to think about closing another plant. And I would even take you to the next step that in a crisis, when something bad happens, we can live without electric, we can live without natural gas, we can live with a lot of things, but we can't live without water. And nobody, nobody, you guys, the mayor, nobody's going to consider putting us at risk. We heard earlier you guys talk about people don't have water. We're very fortunate to have these two great sources of water. It would take a whole lot to consider that and go there. Okay, when they, when they said close a plant, it was somebody looking after a few hours of looking and saying, hey, you can make more water than you could ever use. But that's why I think we need to look at this further and say, do we make the plant smaller? Do we keep two of them going? To have two major rivers for this source is huge. So even if you wanted to go that way, it would be several decades, two, three decades before you could even consider closing that plant. And, and we'd be nuts in the, in the way the state of the world is now to consider shutting off a decent supply of water. So just take that kind of with a grain of salt, if you would, and, and think about it. It's, it's nothing that can be done quick, turnkey. It's a major, major operation. The other big point was MSD. You know, our rates are going through the roof, and what the heck? Why would we consider them? You know, we'd be crazy. Everybody's all upset. But MSD had two issues. And I believe they'll speak to them if you allow them here in a little bit. Was they added efficiencies? They looked at what they were doing daily, day in and day out, to add those efficiencies. But they're faced with a court order because, unfortunately, <clears throat> their infrastructure wouldn't keep the material out of the river during heavy rain events. And that's where a lot of these costs are going now. 
is to fix the infrastructure to do that. I don't think we need to raise rates the way MSD did to solve our problems, but in the end, we are gonna to need to increase our rates. We are gonna to need to go out and bond money and, and find funds to fix our infrastructure so they're not digging up a street. Alderman Vicar, you're very familiar with this. We just paved Hampton Avenue, and what was it? Two days later, they were digging up the main on the street. We have serious infrastructure problems that we have to fix. And so we, we got to look on the outside. We got to have somebody come and kind of prove to you that we're operating efficiently and prove to the citizens that we're doing this right before we ask for more money. And I think that's where the idea went to, hey, bring MSD in. We can hire any consultant we want out in the world, and odds are they're going to tell you what we want to tell them, right? We're better off bringing in some professionals. And these MSD folks are the closest professionals to the water field that can step in. And there's no markup on them, okay? They're, they're doing it dollar for dollar for what MSD costs. Their salary, their benefits is what the match is. And if this MSD plan would move forward, it would just be, it's a merely adding, you know, 120 management hours a week to what water can do so they can change things. I've been around the city a long time and anytime you try to change things, it takes away from what you're doing. We've absorbed a lot of cuts over the years. We've reduced our staff a lot, and it's hard to do the extra part and still doing what you're doing every day. So, I don't know if you have any questions for me. Sure, what, what is the status of that contract or that proposal? Are well, there, so there's some drafts, which we'll share with you here, MSD will. There's the study that was done, a very light study that you'll get one, and then there's a draft of a, an ordinance for you to consider, and then there's a draft of a memorandum of understanding and believe me, there's a draft. One of the things Kurt and I and the MSD people did was we went out to the water plants and to the pipe yard and we visited with the employees and we presented this idea. That's probably why some of your phones rang. We wanted to see what they thought. You know, they're, they're the people doing it. We have a great water plant. We have some of the greatest water employees out there. I mean, it speaks for itself, the best water in the country. You know, they do a good job. But they, they know they need a little help and a little guidance to kind of straighten this out and that's kind of what it's all about so we will share those with you those drafts and then frankly the other concern too is that um this comes after there was some talk of this veolia contract a while ago this privatization of some way um would msd in any way be subcontracting with somebody else no it's a it's a straightforward sharing resources between two government agencies. I mean, MSD in a way is a, another government quasi agency and they're sharing their resources. You know, we, uh, we brought an IT guy from them a few years ago and our IT staff was really bad five or six years ago and we borrowed IT from a different division. It's, it's just trying to work together and we have weaknesses. Some of these, these high level managers that we need to come work with our MSD guys, they're down on the shelf everywhere. They happen to have some hours over here that MSD can share with us, and I think that's the fortunate part. Even if you brought in the best consultants out there, they wouldn't have people that are necessarily fit this mold so good. So that, that's why I, you know, you got to consider this. You got to look at what we're doing here, and yeah, it is a five, six hundred thousand dollar a year thing. The draft reads it could be up to five years. Honestly, I think it's going to last a year or two, and they're going to get into this. One of the quick orders of business once we started talking to the management team was. We're not collecting enough data daily on how the crews are working. So one of Kurt's missions here to get done in the next six months is, is to get this city works invoked so we can look at how the crews are working. So we actually have data for the MSD crew and our other member managers to look at. So, we, you know, and that'll add to the efficiencies. We really don't have good solid, you know, accountability for every crew and what they do. And I think that'll be a big plus. So this isn't just a wild hair, let's give MSD a half a million dollars and see what happens. It's kind of a team approach. Any questions? So tomorrow we're looking at the budget, we're gonna do cuts and putbacks. I got the fire department telling me that their batteries are so bad that the battery life is less than three hours. They have computers that are not working properly and so the safety of the firefighters come into play. So why would I worry about doing a consulting thing right now when I could use that money toward batteries and things that are important? Because I'm gonna make these decisions tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, 
and not to give all my secrets away, but certainly that's where I'm looking to do my cuts so I can put back the fire department. Um, because again, when they're telling me that they got hoses that, because I, they said the composite on the street's different, it really, it's abrasive to the hoses, so they need hoses, that they need batteries for their, you know, their walkie-talkies, that they have less than a three hour when they should have, that uh, the computers that keep the guys safe while they're in the building, they monitor it. I mean, on a list of importance, you know, I mean, I'm, that's just where I'm at. Now, I'm, I mean, I'm going to be open about it. That's certainly where I'm looking. You know, I mean, without any question. So I think it was more of a comment, and certainly you can give me your thoughts. Sir, sure, I, I can respond. So uh, for starters, this money is different. This is an enterprise account. So I don't believe that you're welcome to take money out of the water department to go fund the fire department. Okay, they're, they're totally separate funding sources. And as far as the fire department goes, I had pre-meetings with the fire department, and the fire chief didn't say any of this. So I'm, I'm getting the notes from what he said today, and I'll be talking to the chief to find out where he's going with these comments. Because I met with him earlier, and I helped him put his budget together, and we worked together, and those comments weren't there. So that will be my job tonight to get with him to figure out where he stands and what the needs are. We record all the meetings now, so you just watch it on YouTube. I appreciate that. <laughs> Chairman, I'd like to move that unless the alderman from the 23rd discloses his secrets, we cut off his pizza. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Walterman? All right, thank you. Thank you. And lastly, I think we have someone from MSD. Hi. Can you uh, introduce yourself to the committee, and are you going to provide us these uh, efficiency plan copies? Um, yeah, first. Yeah, I'll introduce myself. I'm John Sprague. I'm the director of operation for MSD. Um, I'm in charge of their treatment plants, collection system, pumping stations. About 600 employees of MSD fall under the operations division. And MSD, we're the group that uh, stepped in and kind of did a high level efficiency study for the water as a favor. Um, to answer your second question, yes, we do have copies of the. Um, our operational efficiency study from a high level, and I believe we can hand that out. Was there any fee associated with the production, with, with the work you've done so far? There has been no fee. This is, uh, MSD has done a number of things like this, um, and this is Kathy Polite, for, uh, she's assistant, uh, assistant director of operations, handing out some studies. Um, we've done a number of these kind of things across the country for different regions. Uh, recently, I've done some papers on our operational efficiencies, and I met with Louisville, Kentucky to go over some of our dashboards and how we track our operations, and we do that kind of thing for free. We've sent our engineering folks out to San Diego to talk about um, how we run our capital program, because we have one of the larger ones in the United States. So, and Hampton Road Sanitation Districts visit our organization. So we've done this kind of, uh, uh, these kind of studies uh, as in the past, and it's just uh, kind of an industry courtesy. Um, now, Kurt uh, kind of went over. We st we stepped in and from a high level over a course of um, you know looking at doing efficiency studies, looking at what was available on the web and the different financial papers, and then going and visiting with management, and then going and visiting the facilities over the course of the day, and kind of hitting some high level things. But I, I do want to emphasize. I'll, I'll answer a few. Th uh, points that I heard brought up today, and I want to point out first of all that uh, MSD, you know, we're not. It's really up to the uh, the city and the aldermen and approval of the the mayor and the city and everybody whether you use us or not as this as a, a kind of a consulting contract to have help drive change. But I will say that I think. Um, is a regional issue. One of the reasons we're we're stepping in and doing this is because we understand that water and wastewater are a, as people's eyes, one issue. Whether it's water, wastewater, just like there's um, confusion over whether water, uh, water gets shut off for wastewater, and people call our company all the time. Water and wastewater are looked at as one entity, and as our rates go up, certainly we understand that they impact the city's ability, because we drive our rates up. If the city water comes, people are going to start mingling those together, going water goes up, wastewater goes up, where does it stop? So certainly we understand um, it's a regional issue. We want to cooperate and help the city any way we can. But we've, we've uh, because of our consent decree and because of some other drivers, uh, we've done a lot of this reorganizing in our own forces and, and made a lot of operational efficiency changes. And uh, 
Did you hand out both sheets, Kathy? Yeah. There's a, you know, besides the whole study itself, there's a little kind of one-page fact sheet on the front page. And on the second page are some operational efficiency things you can look at. But when you stack us up on national metrics, MSD, we actually run one of the more efficient organizations as far as getting work done for the number of people in the organization. Uh, for the size of our district, we have a lot less people than other organizations. So. Um, We've done a lot of those kind of internal looks and we stack up very well and that's why a lot of other organizations around the country uh, look to us from an operational standpoint. Certainly I heard the point that our rates are going up but that's really not, you know, just like in a, uh, an expensive house has a large mortgage doesn't mean it's not efficient from standpoint of having green infrastructure or lights. We run a, a very uh, tight organization operationally but our rates are really being driven by our consent decree with the federal government you know we have a lot of infrastructure in place and we had a lot of overflows and legacy issues that need repaired and the the government is really coming in with under the Clean Water Act and saying you have to get this work done faster so it's all stuff we plan to do but instead of getting it done over the course of 40 years we're doing the majority of this work under 10 to 15 years and it's driving our rates up uh, but that's the course across the United States for a lot of the large cities with all infrastructure. Um, I guess I want to point out a, a couple things. Um, like I said, it's really, we feel like the city could come in and help the water district just on a number of things. You say, why would you spend 500000 Certainly that's kind of an, uh, the high end of the contract. We structured this contract to say we'll provide three full-time equivalents plus other help as needed for the city. So for instance, some of the recommendations I put in the uh, study were that they need to automate more in their plants. Well, if you don't have the, the people in place, automation team or putting plans together, we have a lot of those resources in our district and money was put in that contract so we could bring in IT resources or automation expertise or different type of ad needed functions to help the city uh, put some plans in place. So 600 is really um, the, the high end of the dollars. It was structured that way. But we just felt like the city, you know, we asked Kurt how we can help you get forward or why would you use MSD. And really, we think the 500000 is probably an investment, like Kurt said, that we could probably, with, by spending 500000 a year for a couple of years, you can probably re recoup that through a million or more in savings per year. And certainly, over a couple of years, you'll recoup that money back and then continue on in saving. And really, what our goal would be to help the city get maybe where it took us eight to ten years to get. You can get there in five years or four years. So really accelerate that process through using a lot of the templates that we put in place through training programs, through automation expertise and different things and really help provide them with expertise that we, you know that you have to pay for outside or it takes you time to develop. So really the goal and from our eyes was to help the city make changes that would take like I say eight or ten years to get done in four or five and so you could recoup those cost savings sooner. Um, I just want to say a couple things I want to clarify. We heard talk about yes, did the city ever the city ever shut off water for wastewater bills? And the answer is, you know, since nineteen fifty six when MSD was formed, or not 54, but it's 56 since we really took over operations. Water does not get shut off for wastewater bills. Um, you know, that is actually one of the challenges MSD faces. We have no, you have no hammer to, um, to collect our bills. So we just use aggressive bill collection <coughs> techniques. And just for the record, we have about, I think about 3% uncollected bill rate. So it's not as bad as you think. Um, let's see software, let's see, what else today? trying to write down one other point I heard about MSD, but I, I don't think I remember it this time. But I just really want to open it up. We uh, provide efficiency studies, some talking points. I want to open it up to see if you had any questions that you wanted to ask us. Um, so first, um, thank you for this copy. Um, and the actual uh, board bill of legislation, you said you had a draft that you would provide at some point? Yeah, OK. OK. That'd be great if you can email that and I'll distribute them on the committee. Um, and at a future time, if you don't mind, we would love to have MSD in to just have a conversation just about MSD. Uh, but if anybody has any questions uh, about the MSD as it relates to the water department. Mr. Chairman, uh, how, may I ask, mm -hmm. uh, how imminent is the proposal that uh, requires an ordinance? Is that gonna happen this aldermanic session? Is that a fair question? That would be ideal. Does it have to happen? No, but okay. that would be ideal. All right, thank you. Uh, 
Young man, the, first of all, if you have a three three percent uncollected rate, that would thank that, you. Thank you for the that, compliment. But that, that that's phenomenal. Three percent on I I would question that number, but I have no basis of fact to question it. Uh, you know, I, without boring the assembled multitude here a, again at a neighborhood meeting last night, boy, when, when you're dealing with taxpayers, and that's. The people that care come to the neighborhood meetings. So if I get up and say, how did the city water division compare to other public utility water divisions? And I say, well, they're doing fine, but they have 100 more people than they need. And I'm, I'm oversimplifying. Yeah. But it seems to me that we're getting off to a rocky start. Well, I'll tell you, I, did I That's just one bullet point that I grabbed. I haven't had the chance, obviously, to consume this or well, again, uh, and that's that. That's definitely oversimplifying. So, how they're okay. besides what when I, what I was tasked with to say, how, you know, what when I look at the organization, how does it uh, stack up against benchmarks or where you know best practices? Where certainly city water could not cut a hundred people today, um, you know, because that becomes with putting automation in place, a lot of system infrastructure. We're, we're highly automated MSD. <clears throat> uh, you'd have to put automation in place hinges on ideas of shutting down plants, but if you were looking at it from a high level, where could an organization like the City Water get to over the course of a decade? You know, that's probably where it could operate at. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this is maybe isn't just a question for you, but for anybody here, either one of you three, is it, in your opinion, is the nature of an enterprise fund, or it doesn't really uh, encourage efficiency, does it? You, you, as a city government, you have a pot of money and you can just spend it. And it doesn't, <laughs> you know, the surplus doesn't go back to general revenue. And, and if you got it, you should just figure out a way to spend it. Is that how, in this worst case scenario, not to say that you guys do that, but well, it it's, not a lot of, it's, if, it's not a lot of incentive for efficiency. Well, it's a, um Maybe not in and of itself. I wouldn't necessarily say the enterprise account generates or drives efficiency or not drives it. I mean, it's a way of operating the utility. We exist on the revenues we bring in, and there is, in the staff, there's a lot of professional pride and dedication to doing what we do. You know, we have people working 24-7 and come in middle of the night, holidays, weekends. They're there when they're needed to be there. So I, I think with that in mind, you know, I have a lot of staff that wants to be more aggressive in collecting the revenue, that want to do the right thing, that want to be uh, efficient in what we do and being cost saving. Because frankly, there's a lot of competition for our jobs there. You know, we, we're, I think there's real benefit for a city owned and operated utility, but there's private companies that does that every day. And if we are not efficient, all our employees' jobs are at jeopardy and uh, in operations at jeopardy. So I think there's a driving force in that way to make sure that we are efficient. And did that kind of suffice? Good what answer. And, and, and if you don't mind, could I expand on somebody? That reminded me really what I forgot to talk about. Uh, really, you know, if you go back MSD, that's what drove us to change years ago as a privatization scare around the um, 2000, you know, there's a lot of companies and uh, back then there's some history Atlanta sold their Atlanta large city sold their privatized their utilities ultimately they took it back but that kind of scare and some turmoil brought MSD to really take a hard look and you know change our you know our staff ratios used to be six seven to one now they're about 12 to one staff to management ratios we, we took a hard look at the organization automation being more efficient we lose technology a lot so that's what drove us there and it really and right now we're paying for infrastructure you know our, our aged infrastructure not taking care of that and not, not getting our rights where they need to be take care of that in a timely fashion and kind of that's what uh, when I talked to Kurt those are the same kind of issues he's looking at right there right now he feels a lot of those same type of drivers. You know, they want to 
you know, you want to eliminate that talk of privatization down the road. If the city wants to retain it, well, then you need to take a look at your house and put, you know get it in better order. And he also knows that you know the infrastructure in the city is also uh, needs a lot of improvement. So when you have those tough choices, you need to get your you know, to get the operational efficiency in order, and that helps you get support to get those rates you need so that you can take care of those infrastructure needs and stop that reactive cycle. They, you know, they get in where you're chasing your tail and water main breaks when you really want to be doing proactive work and taking care of things. And that's what really we're trying to help with. Alderman Ogilvy. Thanks. Um, a couple of years ago when we spent, you know, a thousand hours with the water division <laughs> talking about proposed contracts, uh, one, one focus was just on, uh, you know, water that is not making it to the customer, essentially, that we're pulling out of the river, processing, putting in a pipe somewhere, and then it just goes into the ground. I don't think we had a figure on that at the time, but here you've provided a figure. I don't know if this is an estimate or if it's an actual figure, but... Um, what page is it? On 17 of the handout that MSD gave us, losses are here estimated at something like uh, 30 million gallons a day. But, Yes, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with the study, and those are based on estimates, of course, because right. a lot of stuff is a metered. But just in general, they're based on the idea that um, there's a national average for how much water a person uses per day. So knowing the population of the city, we know how much. Typically, you'd see with older plumbing, I bumped that up. We know business usage because that's largely metered. We also know that, but then the rest of it's unmetered. So we know how much they're producing, how much you typically see for an organization this size. But also, again, maybe a better word than uh, losses would be unmetered water because um, a lot of the usage in the city, and we were talking about promoting uh, efficiency, one of the things I was pointing out with Kurt, it's kind of just long standing way, the city parks, the city buildings, none of them are metered and nobody pays for water. Well, you can't promote efficiency that way, so you really have to take a look at the city as a whole and how to use water, because if you want to promote efficiency, cut right. usage. Right, so, yeah, like and the, I mean, the other term you've used here is 45% of our water production is, is non-revenue producing, so. That would be a fair statement. Yeah, so. Nine out of 20 hamburgers is. that we're making, we're just throwing out the back door in, into the alley if we were a it, hamburger And again, place. that's still an estimate as well. Right. That could be off by a fact. So, I mean, that's the, that, that has seemed to me for the last couple of years like kind of the crux of the issue that we have a, a very aged pipe system under the ground delivering water. It's all leaking. A ton of water is going to the ground. So part of the strategy has to be the capital investments into the, the the system across the city, the water main network, to reduce that waste, right? That's correct. And is that, I can't even fathom what the price tag on that would be, so. And, and that's a lot of the discussion that we're facing, right? And that was really why we came, you know, that experience with Kurt's like, you know, when you start talking infrastructure and the cost of the dollars, you've really got to get your, you got to show people, you know, when you start talking um, large customers and stakeholders that are interested in water, if you start saying, I've got to raise my rates for infrastructure and start talking those kind of dollars, and you got to get your operational house in order because that's the first place people will look. Are you efficient before you start raising rates? And then you can use that savings to invest in infrastructure. So instead of, you know, instead of being the kind of position MSD is with, you know, raising or doubling our rates over the course of eight years, you know, you can kind of get ahead of the game, get efficiencies in place, put, invest that money in infrastructure and start reducing those losses and you just keep recouping savings, which you can put back in the system. So that's, you know, that's the idea here. Okay. Agree. Is that it? Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. And last comment here from uh, Mr. Walton. Step on anybody's head. No. I, I think the whole crux of this, Alderman Villa mentioned this, like when do you want this done? I think the idea is that we need to figure out what you need to consider a rate increase. Okay, the writing's on the wall, and Kirk can provide that to you that in two or three years we're going to need a rate increase. So the whole idea of this exercise is is what do we need to do to show the citizens and to show you that the water department's operating efficiently so that we can do a rate increase in a couple of years. So I just wanted to leave you with that thought, whether it's Veolia, MSD, or whatever you guys think it is, that's kind of where we're at. We need to know what you guys want to see. Okay. Well, that'd be an ongoing conversation. 
Well, thank you for uh, all the speakers who came and for the committee members. And I think with that, um, we will adjourn.